Hello everyone. Now today we're going to be uh, we're going to be harvesting, preparing, creating, and eating some of the very best soup, most nutrition, most nutritionally dense, flavoursome, and just all around gorgeous soup you'll ever taste in your life. And also, it's got the funky name of being Incredible Hulk soup. And the kids love it as well, right? So, without further ado, off up to the allotments and go and see our guru, Mafinda. He's going to waffle on for about 10 minutes, so what I'll do is I'll timestamp it below so you can cut to the actual um, making of the soup part. The first bit is all about, kind of about the nutritional side of things and also the harvesting and, um, you know, saving as much of your leafy green vegetables, your cruciferous vegetables, your brassica vegetables as you possibly can. Don't just eat the heads of the brassicas, eat the leaves too, um, as you'll see in this video. So yeah, if you want to skip to that, it'll be time stamped below. All right, boys and girls, I hope you enjoy it. I'm sure you will. Try the soup, make the soup. I will tell you right now that it's the most tastiest and you just know it's bursting with goodness. So give it a whirl. Hulk soup. Crack on. All right. Um, back at the plots. Look at this. It's called okra behind me. Okra. And we're getting okra growing on it. Ladies' fingers. Mm. Peanuts there. Some peanuts. Right, today, I'm going to be doing a little bit of harvesting. I'm a bit fat like Daddy Pig. I've got a bit of a tummy. Peppa Pig's dad, Daddy Pig. I'm sure he's borderline, if not full-blown diabetic, like me. But in order to sort of look after yourself, or myself, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be harvesting some leafy greens, some onion, which... We've already got harvested, it's drying out in there. But I'm going to make a nice, nutritious soup with it. Now, you may have seen a similar variation to this soup that I'm going to be making on the channel. But I'm going to be taking, um, I'm going to be taking some leafy green from an unexpected source. Now, if you like us, what you'll have found is that um, your broccoli and your cauliflower, you'll have already taken the heads off from the first set of plants. Now, if you followed our advice and didn't take the whole plant out, um, you'll have leafy greens. You'll have um, brassica greens to take. So I've just exposed some here of the uh, broccoli or the calabrese, which has been beheaded. But there are green leaves still in there. And because there are green leaves still in there, I can harvest them and we can uh, add them as, a, as an ingredient to our nutritious soup. The brassica family is fantastic. It's full of fibre, full of all kinds of vitamins, minerals and other compounds that, uh, that assist in your health and especially with the brassica family. Any cruciferous vegetable really is good for your immune system and also for anti-cancer properties that it, that it contains. It helps, and that's not just me saying it, that's um, many, 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 many volumes of research about the brassicas. So uh, get on your brassicas, they're good for you. And I'm going to be taking some of those leaves there, and I'm also going to be taking some of the kale that we've got growing, some onions, some new potatoes that I'm going to be taking. I'm going to try the red potatoes this time, red onions and red potatoes in the mix. And uh, we'll make a nutritious soup. How's that? I'm going to be adding the onions and the garlic again. Again, very good. Very good for the uh, digestive tract. Uh, the garlic crosses the um, blood-brain barrier. And has been... So it's been suggested, really, with garlic, that garlic can um, help to stave off early-onset Alzheimer's and things like that. There are lots of benefits to garlic. They're a, a superfood. And so are the, uh, the Allium family in general, leeks, onions, garlic. Excellent, excellent form of food. 
Was it uh, Hippocrates or somebody like that that said, uh, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food? Well, it's got to it's got to be right, that really, isn't it? I think. And if you can get natural, organically grown, pesticide-free vegetables, all the better. So that's what I'm going to be harvesting today and taking back with me. All right. Let's get on with the soup. Now, at the moment, we've got the uh, Caballo de Niro. I call it Robert de Niro Kale because I can never remember the real name of it. But um, that's what we've got growing. It's a little bit bug bit, but that'll soon wash up. And uh, we're going to take a few leaves of the of the kale and add that in with the broccoli leaves. So I'll get on with that now. What we do with these is we take the outer leaves. You can see that's a little bit manky and it doesn't look very appetising, but it doesn't matter because it's going into a soup and we waste not and we want not down on the little farmer's farm. It's even got a slug trail coming up it. But we'll clean that up, see what we can harvest, get rid of the white fly. <sighs> it's all edible, boys and girls, trust me. I'm a guru. So let's collect that. There we go. There's nothing wrong with that. Once it's washed and cleaned and prepared, it'll be fine, that. Now let's look at these. Now you can see there's damage there from our little friends um, now I'm gonna I was hoping that we were gonna get side shoots coming off from when we took the main head off the head was big on these ones it was about um, 10 inches across you got some big heads of broccoli off it but only the one so instead of ripping the entire plant out we've left the leaves the leaves to carry on and a lot of them are in good condition but the longer that they stay in here the less of a good condition we're gonna get from them there's a bumbly bee. So we're going to take some of those out. We're going to take those. We're going to add them into the soup mix because there's absolutely nothing wrong with those whatsoever. Packed with nature's goodness, those leaves. So we're having them. I'm going to get me uh, secateurs and get cracking. Hello. I couldn't find me secateurs. So I've got these. Now these will do the job. So we'll just in with those, sniff them off. I'll take my leaves. I'll just put them to one side. There we go. All we're doing is harvesting the leaves. Now these knackery ones, really knackered ones, like that. Yeah, I've been them off. But some of these leaves are fine. There's nothing wrong with them. It's alright. It's got a blemish on it. A brown blemish. Could be bird poo. I think we'll leave that one alone. That's okay. Nothing at all wrong with that one. The longer you, you the longer you leave them in the ground, if you like, or as plants, the more susceptible or the more likely they're gonna be to be attacked by bugs so what uh, you can't leave them in forever they'll either naturally naturally rot off themselves or they'll be eaten by uh, by pests but we'll take what we can from them that's got a bit of muck on it potentially bird poo which you don't want because of salmonella, etc. You can uh, do your quality control as you go, really, with this. So for the healthy leaves, the nicest leaves, like these ones, untouched by bug. And they'll be further processed down when we get them home. Just put a bit of brown out there. A brown spot. A blemish. I mean, I'm no food fascist, but 
when you've got an abundance of leaf like this, you can afford to be a bit more critical, you know. Just take a couple of those horses' tails out. Or mare's tails, whichever you want to use. The reason they're not too badly damaged by by slugs and stuff is because we put sheep's uh, wool sheep's wool pellets around the bases of these, and also we put brassica collars on to prevent the um, the cabbage root root flies from getting at them. And they were the homemade brassica collars, which were basically the um, the Tyvek suits, the disposable uh, coveralls that we cut into circles and put around the base. There's a video on that if you want to check the back catalogue when we actually planted these in. But it's such a pity when people pull, pull the whole plant out just to get the head off it. I don't see the point to that, really. Because you've got all this leaf growth, which is all edible. It's all edible. And it's, um, it's essentially the same beast, it's the same plant. So, um, you're missing out on a lot of food, really, there. By doing that. So we'll, we'll, we'll carry on. There's another one there that I'm going to take as well. So we'll have a lot of leaf to choose from. And it's essentially free, you know. It's a byproduct of growing your big floret of, of, uh, of broccoli. And it's the same situation where you've got your cauliflowers. You'll take the floret of cauliflowers and take those out. And then all the leaf, you can process the leaf and make soups with it. You've just got to store it, as you'll see later on, in the freezer. Okay. All of these have bolted now, but what I will do with these is the ones at the top, that are in good condition we're going to take the leaf from that and we're going to have it in salads the rest of it's going to have to go but these are all these are all fine so we can leave a couple of them in and just take all the dead ones out all right see you in a bit yeah there's a big pile of leaf there and it's all edible so let's get that back to the ranch I'll, I'll select some um, onions and garlic to take as well that we've got uh, we've got stored up in the up in the top. Oh, and I need some potatoes too, don't I? I think I've got a bucket of red jute left, so we'll have those. There we are, a forgotten bucket of uh, red jute of York. We'll tip that out and we'll have a see what's inside it. Okay. Still got a few peas left on here, so I think I'll do a final cropping. And we'll add some uh, protein in the mix in the form of the peas, the pulses. Yeah, why not? Yeah, we'll do that. But first, let's take a look at what uh, potatoes we've got. So yeah, those are Red Duke of York, planted in on the 29th of March. 2020 so that means that it's now the what is it the 16th 17th yeah well, I think it's the 17th maybe the 18th it's uh, mid July so they've had um, they've had a good sort of like 14 14 and a half weeks they were knocked back though by the the frost that we had so they're not going to be as spectacular as they could have been but we're hoping to get maybe a pound and a half out of the box, out of the uh, bucket there. We'll do a tip out and we'll see. Okay. Now this is a bed that we cleared of the uh, the black currant. We took the black currant bushes out of here, and I want to um, fill that bed. And what I am going to be doing with um, all the spent compost is exactly what I've done there. So as the buckets get emptied, in it goes into here. Just got to sieve through and make sure we don't leave any little uh, little tiny potatoes behind because they'll grow into potato plants next year and I don't particularly want that for potato plants. But um, that's where we're going to be doing our tip out. So I'm just going to clip all the um, 
foliage off the top, upturn that bucket, wood chip and all. That was a tip that we got from Tony O'Neill at Simplify Gardening. Just to put an inch of, um, of, of wood chip on the top of, of the bucket, uh, just to retain moisture and keep the weeds down, and it does work. If you look in there, there's uh, hardly a weed to be seen, and we'll see what the results are from that. As I say, that's been in there for 14 weeks, but it got knocked back by the frost. So uh, it's not going to be as spectacular as, uh, as it should be, really. But you never know. Fingers crossed. We'll find out in a minute, won't we? Tip out of time. Let's see what we've got. If anything. Get stuck into it. Oh yeah, there's some in there. These are the red dukes of York. I'm just going to make sure that none of the little tiny potatoes go astray. I want to give them a bit of a shake. Some little tiny ones still on there, but I'll just take those off. Because they can all go into the soup. Within reason. I mean, they're really, really tiny ones I'm not going to bother with. But it's not too bad. That's what we've got out of that bucket. Which I would say... About a pound and a quarter. Of the uh, red dukes of York, so they're going to be going into the mix. See you in a bit. We're going to take the red onion uh, root, I think, with this particular soup. Um, these are quite cured. Now, they're not very big onions, they're fairly small onions, these. So I'm going to take six of them. Bouncing away there, aren't they? I'll take six of those. And I'll take a nice, uh, a nice garlic as well. That seems quite, quite a good one. So yeah, we'll get the whole of that one. In fact, I might take that one and a smaller one like that. Take the two. Yeah, I'll take those two, and I'll take six of these onions here. Got some peas as well, so. Uh, it's all good, isn't it? It's all going to be tasty and nice and nutritious. Hello! So we're back from the plots and uh, it's time to make some soup. So first things first, we're going to wash everything and uh, make it all spick and span and clean. And um, then we're going to prep the vegetables ready. See you in a bit. Now these um, stalks on the leaves are very cellulose. There's too much fibrous material in those. It'll be, it'll make for a sort of a unpleasant soup. So I'm going to destalk these so that we're left with just the the basic thin leaf material. And I'm going to give that a good wash. So uh, okay, we'll crack on with that. So yeah, the stalky part, which is this, can be cut out. I'll take those little leaves off. We'll keep those ones because they're nice. Uh, but at this stage also what you can do is you can look and check the leaves for any damage such as that and that can be removed at this stage so you, you just, you're just going to be left with the nice healthy leaf 
that's going to be going into your uh, to your meal. So yeah, I'll do that. Now, as you can see from these leaves, they'll need to be coarsely chopped. So that's what I'm going to do next. That's just a part of the pile of leaves. As you can look over there, there's quite a lot of it. But once this is being um, cut down, it'll cook down to much, much smaller volume than that. So you do need quite a bit of leaf, really. After all, we want it as nutrition, nutritionally packed as we possibly can. So I'm going to work, work through that, process it, chop it up into sort of, I don't know, one inch square pieces. And then that's ready then to be added into the soup at a later time. So yeah, that just gets washed off. And some lukewarm water with a bit of salt added in to get rid of any bugs. And we waste not, we want not, so the stalks are still not going to be uh, thrown in the bin. They're going to be composted or fed to our rabbit. Wish we had more rabbits really. Far too much for little Daisy there, but uh, we'll give her a stalk or two. And then the rest will be going to the compost bin. There's a little treat for Daisy. Daisy. That's James's rabbit, that. Uh, but she'll certainly eat that. Not while I'm here watching her, obviously. That'll be too cool, won't it? But uh, she'll be eating that in uh, no time at all. Now, all I've done with the carrots is give them a, a wash and a bit of a scrub. They're not going to be peeled because we want the extra sort of fibre and goodness from the skin. Uh, they're just going to be topped and bottomed and then diced up. And that's it for the carrots. Okay. Right, so we're going to make our vegetable soup today. All fresh ingredients, those. Five in the end, five medium-sized, small to medium-sized onions. Um, about 12 broccoli leaves and 6 kale leaves all chopped up and washed carrots, 6 carrots chopped up into medallions and also if they're quite large medallions they were cut down even further ok um, 6 cloves of garlic there's about I would say 6 ounces of potatoes there the peas that we got from those pea pods, again, there's probably about, I don't know, a cup full of peas. We wanted more peas, really, but that's all we got. A uh, goodly amount of butter and seasoning that's in there. It's going to be black pepper. We're going to be having the Italian herbs. Turmeric. Always turmeric. You can't go wrong with turmeric. Again, very, very good for you. And uh, British coriander leaf. That's the ingredients that we're going to be using. Okay, so uh, we'll crack on. All right, so I'm just melting uh, melting six ounces of butter. There. It's going to be a good, rich and hearty soup stroke broth mix. It's going to be very thick soup, this. It'll stick to your ribs. And do you no harm whatsoever. The butter is the key for a decent soup. Rich and creamy is what it's all about. Because we're going to saute the garlic and the onions first of all. So uh, that's the next part. So it's in with the onions. Keeping the temperature quite high at this stage. We want these to soften off really nicely. So they're going to be well sautéed. I'm going to um, crush the garlic and add that in right now, okay? Alright, and already those smells are really coming through. Saute that down until it's um, it's all nicely softened off. Now that's been going for uh, around eight minutes, and into that we're going to add a pint and a half of water. Oh, 
like so. And then bring that up to the boil. And then the carrots, the peas and the potatoes are going to go in with that. Now what I've done with the potatoes is uh, I've halved them so that they're all about that size. And that way they'll, um, they'll boil and cook through quicker, essentially. And so that it all should be ready around about the same time as the carrots and the peas. Peas, carrots, potatoes, all, all of those are going to be going in at the same time. And then uh, after about 20 more minutes of cooking, we're going to be adding in the greens. I don't think I'll be putting all of that in there. I might save it for sort of stir fries that because there's a heck of a lot of greenery there. And uh, I think it might be a little bit too green rich, if you like. It'll be a brown soup anyway, this. It'll sort of be like a um, an earthy brown colour as it stands. Um, but we're going to add in the, uh, the turmeric and that should again yellow off the brownness if you want. It'll be really, really, really nutritious this though. So, uh, happy days. And the butter never hurts. Don't worry about the butter, boys and girls. It's certainly a lot, lot better than margarine. So, uh, there we go. And you need the butter. You need the butter for a good, authentic soup. Trust me. It makes all the difference. So, it's at the boil now. And uh, we're going to add in the peas, the carrots... And the potatoes I've finally I've chopped the uh, potatoes down a little bit more so they're into sort of like I don't know three quarter inch cubes uh, and that way uh, they will all cook through probably about the same time as the carrots and the peas and which is what we want right peas are going on in go are the peas carrots are going in. In go the carrots. Potatoes are going in. In go the potatoes. All right. Lid is going on. On goes the lid. And we'll come back to that in another 20 minutes. But we'll, do, we'll let it come to the boil again and then reduce it down to a simmer. And then come back to that. So it's about 15 minutes later and um, I'm going to add in another half a pint of liquid. Which is water and um, three vegetable stock cubes mixed into it. So here goes. Alright. I'm going to mix that through. It's going to be a good hearty broth style soup this one. Okay. 15 minutes later and in goes the green stuff. So that's the broccoli leaf and the kale. That's going to be going in there now and it's going to only need really now another maybe five minutes before we can get to the blending stage with the hand blender. But I'm going to be putting some um, some of the spices in, the herbs in. So the Italian seasoning, a good shake of that. I'll just do it in shakes. Uh, British coriander leaf, and plenty of turmeric. Give that a stir in. I'm also going to add in 20 turns of the black 
peppercorn. Grind that in, the pepper. But I can't do that with one hand, so you'll have to bear with me with that. So it's been simmering again for about another seven or eight minutes. Everything's wilted and soft now. I'm going to switch off the heat. Blow away some of the steam. Just check that out. Really nice. And using a cheapo Asda or Walmart stick blender or hand blender. I'm going to just basically put it into the mix there and uh, mix it all into a soupy consistency. I'll catch you later. Now that's been blended now for a couple of minutes with the hand blender. And it's a thick and creamy consistency. I've just had a little taste of it as well. It's absolutely beautiful. You'll have to trust me with this, but this is called Hulk Soup. I'm going to call this Hulk Soup, like the Incredible Hulk, and uh, hope that my kids will eat that. As soon as they taste it, they'll uh, they'll appreciate the beauty and the uh, the absolute. I don't know how you would describe it. It's just really thick, creamy, nutritious. Doesn't taste earthy in any way. It's, oh, it's just really nice, really nice, thick vegetable type soup. Of course, if you wanted it darker than that, you'd add more leaves into it. I just put two big uh, double handfuls of the of the broccoli leaf and the kale leaf into that. Um, you can add salt if you like, but I think that the three cubes of um, vegetable stock is enough. And um, also, there was a tablespoon of pepper that went into that. The turmeric. I would say a good tablespoon of turmeric in it. And, um, yeah, the mixed Italian herbs. And you can taste it all in there, but it's not overpowering. It's, um, I don't know, it's just well-balanced. It's a well, well-balanced soup. And I think it tastes great. Really thick, really creamy, really hearty. Sticks to your ribs. As my grandma used to say. I'm going to get that plated up. Add a little bit on my lip then. Mm, that's good. Um, so I'm going to plate that up. And have some more of it. I'm going to decant all of that mix as well into the casserole dish. I'm not going to casserole it obviously. But it's just it's just somewhere to keep it for the time being. And, uh, and until we can... Um, place it into the storage containers because we're going to freeze up some of that as well for later consumption all right see you in a bit i'm just going to uh, sprinkle a few shavings of uh, mature cheddar cheese into that And then I'm going to try a little bit. Oh, that is so good. Oh, it just tastes really, really nice. Right, I'm going to have to leave you now while I eat that, because it's absolute. I'm going to get some crusty bread. I'm going to find some crusty bread, a little bit of butter, and I'm going to eat that. Mm -mm. Now, to store, the, to store the soup, three pounds investment buys you 16 of these, uh, these storage tubs, which are uh, food-grade quality plastic. And also will withstand freezing. So all we do is we we decant the soup. Into there. Yee, it's all gloopy down the side. It's a good job it tastes gorgeous. Into there and then the, the lid goes on. 
that's cooled down now to room temperature so now with that lid on that's fine for storage I'm going to put that in the freezer now because we've all had a bowl of the soup in fact I've had a bowl and a half of the soup there's only enough now for two to be stored now I cleared this uh, this is the third freezer actually we've got a big chest freezer we've got the freezer in our main um, refrigerator and this is the second one, this is the old freezer really uh, that's stored in a different part of the building and uh, so I'm going to be stocking that up with all of these um, these soups over the next couple of weeks and I'll get 16 in there um, so yeah why not watch this face watch this face That is absolutely beautiful. Crop it, make it, eat it. Have a fantastic weekend. It's Friday now. Don't get too drunk. And uh, we'll see you over the weekend. I've got to uh, decant all of that soup now into the, into the casserole terrain, whatever it's called. And um, clean that... Uh, Clean that out so that I can make me uh, me beetroot preserves. God, that's gorgeous! I'm going to eat three or four bowls of that. That is really, really, really nice. If you were a, if you were a vegan, you could eat that. You just couldn't use the butter or the cheese. But I think the butter and the cheese don't necessarily make it, but they, but they improve it. I think certainly the butter, the creaminess from that butter. Right, see you later on, boys and girls. Bye-bye.